to make sure we're live there. We're going to give you all some time to get in here today because I definitely want you all that can be involved with this to get involved. So we want to make sure that we're live on every single angle. So give me one moment, guys, as I do so and make sure that this is on all of our channels that we possibly have. TikTok, come on in here, come on in here, come on in here. This is the Minister Marquise Kimball. We got a lot to cover tonight, and we are going to talk about uh, the situation that is happening uh, right now concerning uh, the uh, State Farm Corporation, uh, McNeil Chevrolet Buick. And I'm going to name the rich Sh uh, Chevrolet Cadillac because I know where the money is, and I know who owns the dealership. So I don't know who's going to take care of what happened here, why this situation is not going to be ignored, uh, because you guys, I'm going to the public, uh, to the public platforms that I created, and I'm going to share every single opportunity that I can on what transpired and went on as I was the finance manager uh, for McNeil Chevrolet Buick in Swanton, Ohio. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want anybody that I personally invited out to that dealership over the past 10 years that was African-American that signed a vehicle with me in my office and can recall their experience at this dealership as being less than par. I know there's a lot of you out there and I do not, I cannot remember each and every situation. But we're going to talk about two situations tonight that we're not going to name the names of the people. But understand, McNeils, I have these people at my disposal. So do not play games with me with this because I'm not playing games with you. Now, you guys decided to antagonize me. You're not my friend because if you were my friend while I was going through the the situation of a hate crime that broke into my business while the police took whatever time they wanted to show up, even though they were two minutes walking distance, y'all. Two minutes walking distance from my business. The alarms go off at 6.45 a.m. and they somehow don't show up till 7.15 I live 20, 20 plus miles away from the store, but I get investigated as a person that had something to do with the break-in of my own business. Let's see how that even makes any sense. Let's talk about that. How in the hell does that even make sense? How would I or anybody I know would know that the police were gonna show up an hour late? It doesn't make a damn bit of sense at all. And instead of being treated as a victim, a business owner, I reached out to the mayor, which is why he's known and named in this post. I've got the evidence. I've got the receipts. Let me get my sunglasses on. Damn that. I've got the receipts, Mr. Tope, Neil, where you and I spoke handedly back and forth about how bad your racist police officers treated me and my sister. You and I spoke about how they interrogated us, fingerprinted me. Now, I want you to understand, people, on all my platforms, I'm a registered minister. I am a public notary. I've never been in trouble in my 40 years of living. But yet, the police treated me as though I was a criminal from the minute I finally showed up at the location. Furthermore, the insurance agent, Jeff Lambert, who had an office six minutes from the store, ignored my phone call to report the incident all day long forcing me to call State Farm's 1-800 number. Since I did that, they said I was too eager, and they took me through a two-year investigation 
to then come up with this scam that I showed up to court with a blue suit on, with a loud tie, wearing a bunch of jewelry, no more jewelry than what I've got on right now. And I was very braggadocious. It's what they put on documents. They even put on the same documents that I had something to do with the break-in of my own business. Now, you would think the people and my colleagues, so-called colleagues in the Swanton community, helped a lot of people get into vehicles, helped a lot of people with ailing uh, issues with CBD, older people. We built a business successfully. You would think that somebody would come to my defense and say, there's no way in God's green earth that Mr. Kimball would be involved in anything like that. First of all, anybody that I knew doesn't hang around Swanton at six o'clock in the morning. Nobody I know. In fact, most of every person I know did not even like coming out there. My precious grandmother, Barbara Purdue, rest of soul, you all know how much I loved her, so I would never make up any lies concerning Barb. But even Barb at her sweetness and all beautiful and nice she was, she would always say to me, I cannot stand coming to that dealership. The only reason I come there is because you are there. I do not want to bring my truck out there ever if you're not there because of her experience with the service department. Now, these are real stories, y'all, and I've got the receipts. You don't believe me? Let's go pull some deals from McNeil's. Let's, oh, that sounds good. Make a jingle of that. Let's go pull some meals, me, uh, deals from McNeil's. Let's go pull some deal jackets. I signed them. Let's see if there's a difference between way how they side treated African Americans and how they treated their fellow Caucasian. Now, as an employee, I suffered over the years being treated as the person that was paid the highest. They told me all the time, you get paid the most money. You are the highest paid employee. I used to hear that in my sleep. It was a reminder to me that not only are we paying you well, but whatever we give you, you will take what we give you with it. And so somehow I felt the need to accept it. It was my good friend's wife who had to remind me the other day, the years of jokes and things I just let roll off my sleeve. At one point when the monkey or gr gorilla Harambe passed away, it was a running nice little joke calling me the finance manager at the dealership Harambe. Now I have the evidence of who said that to me and several people know who I'm talking about. Several of them still are employed at this dealership McNeil's. You don't want to get into this fire with me, and I've never been the guy to pull the race car. But you keep messing with me and messing with me and messing with me. It calls my phone and harasses me and says that he is the Swanton Police Department. All as some joke. Now, I thought that he was calling me to offer me a job position because the person that contacted me first happened to be, so I thought, a friend of mine who works there, who happens to now be the sales manager. She reached out to me on Facebook. Hey, what's up? I thought it was all right to reach out and say something to her because I thought we were friends. She says, we're going to call you back. I'm thinking, whoa, whoa. she says, me and Jason, the boss. So I think that you're going to call me for a position because I still have people going to that dealership today because of the stuff I did online back then, bringing people out. McNeil's could never get them approved because they couldn't have the banks in line. They never had the cars, enough cars. They never spent the money to get the cars. And they never had the banks in line to get people approved. So a lot of my people I brought out, we sent them home. 
or they were forced to buy cars they didn't want to buy. And usually it was a higher payment than what they wanted to, uh, to pay. Period. It's the truth. Now, I can probably show you 95% of deals that I wrote with people that were Caucasian, gold credit, and their car payment was half the money. Don't start telling me about credit because there was a profit center there too. Now, these people know that these are truthful statements. I don't give a damn what attorney you want to call. I've got the evidence. I've got the receipts. And had you not called my phone when you already know what I am in the middle of fighting, you know that I have to prove my innocence because State Farm chose to call me a criminal. Don't tell me you don't know. Jeff Lambert talked to everybody. That's another thing that was broken. Unlawful disclosing of my personal information that flew around that city. I've got evidence of that too. All of this stuff I was told not to talk about for a year. That's the last jackass of an attorney that I had. I thought it made sense. Somehow. And somehow, we never get a day in court. The day before court date, somehow the case is dismissed. And I'm told that I got to refile it all over again with State Farm. This happens. The, and, and the day before that, the attorney... State Farm's attorney and the judge all came out of the court laughing and smiling and he hit on it all together. That's what truly happened the day before. I'm told the case, you got to do it all over again. You got to hear the file. Through it all, McNeil's decided to call my phone and impersonate the Swanton Police Department. Oh, y'all don't believe me? I've got it on video. Y'all, all you got to do is watch one of the videos. It's on YouTube. I've got it everywhere. I need y'all to share it. And if you are a customer that came out there with me or because of me, and you remember your situation, I want to bring you in on this because I want you to share what happened. And when I say I'm going to bring you in, that means I'm going to bring you in with the entire case because your testimony will be used in the courts. So if you had a situation and I remember, I don't remember names, I don't remember everybody's situation, so forgive me. Yes, I was the finance manager. Yes, I wrote your deal, but I just don't remember your situation. So if you had a specific situation, and I know a lot of you did, because we're going to talk about two situations that I think needs to be brought to light. Now, when we say that there's no racist stuff going on, we're going to talk about this card that was given to me, presented to me by the whole entire dealership for my birthday. Can y'all see that? I hope y'all can see that. Everybody see that? I hope y'all can see that. All right. I want you to understand something, guys. This was presented to me uh, by my dealership, the entire dealership. It's supposed to be some type of a birthday acknowledgement. Nothing wrong with the birthday acknowledgement, as you can see here, but here's the problem. Here's where it falls apart. Here's where their story of, oh, we were just saying happy birthday to you. It falls apart. You see what's on the front of this card? Okay. Just to give you an example of the joking matter that I put up with for years just to take a paycheck. Yeah, they paid me a hundred grand a year plus, but this is what I put up with. This birthday card represents a little black boy. Let's say what it is. Let's not even dance tonight. In front of a Chevy car, Chevy dealership. So McNeil Chevrolet, GM Chevrolet, your name is mentioned here. Okay. So you can get whatever attorneys you want in line. Your name is mentioned because this is a Chevrolet card presented to a former finance manager of a Chevrolet dealership by a GM staff. And it was not because it was a happy birthday moment, because it, would you agree, you could go to any place at anywhere and get any kind of a birthday card to give to somebody. But this falls apart because at that time and at any time during that time of my employment, there was no other employee there that worked there that looked like this, looked like this. So the running joke was, was the fact that this was a black boy. 
Let's not dance tonight. Y'all want to dance with me, McNeils? I got an indictment towards you. You had no right to do that to me. You know what you did to me when I thought you were the police? Do you know what you did to me? So you're going to pay for this. This is a problem because everybody that signed this card has happened to be Caucasian outside of one guy that was Mexican. Everybody else, Caucasian. You want to sit there and talk to me like I'm a two-year-old like that? Had nothing to do with the color of the joke of my skin at this racist-ass establishment. The Harambe jokes, the all of that crap, I tolerated. I tolerated everybody I was supposed to. Man, how can you put up with that? Man, I don't care. They give me a free car. My family's all right. I ain't offended. They not racist. They can't be racist. They give you the shirt off their back. Well, then where in the hell was you at when my store was robbed and your community and made me out to be a criminal? Where were you? So I sat in your finance chair for eight years and nobody came to my defense, all of y'all. Mr. Mayor, didn't I cut the ribbon with my wife in the paper with you? Huh? Y'all want me to sit down and shut up about this. I did that enough. Now I want justice. You don't get to in implicate and call me a criminal. And I've never been in trouble in my life. You don't get to do that. How do you get to do that, State Farm? How do you get to judge whether you're going to pay out a claim based upon me wearing jewelry? The same damn jewelry I got on right now. Wedding ring, a watch. That day I had a bracelet. My necklace was covered up because I had on a tie. And you want to put in paperwork that I showed up with a blue suit on, wearing a loud blue toe, loud tie, with a bunch of jewelry and was very braggadocious. What were you trying to insinuate? And then when I gave you some people that I thought could have been responsible for this, like I was supposed to as the insured person, they asked the insured person, is there anybody that might have some problems or issues with you that could have been responsible for this crime? I give you a name of Mike Wells, who was harassing us every day that we opened our new store. I told it to the police. Every day, he would come by and harass my employees, namely my wife and my sister, myself, every day. Told it to the police, Swanton Police Department. That's why you're named. Nothing was ever done about it. So when I tell State Farm that this guy could have done some of this, and guess who told me to do that? McNeils. Yeah, the, the same damn dealership. This is why they're named, because they're involved some kind of way. McNeils tells me, the boss, Jason Goss, says, hey, you better go and tell State Farm to check out Mike Wells. Because it'd be, here's his words, it'd be just like him to put somebody up to doing this that works for him in his apartments. Exact words. And then he turns around and says, are you planning a, 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 a proceeding action against the Swanton uh, Police Department? I said, no, what do you What do you mean? Well, I'm hearing through the grapevine that that's what you're doing. And if you are, we're gonna have to disconnect talking to each other because uh, we can't have that. We can't, we, it would affect the business too much. At that point, I would have had no idea and was not going to say anything to the Swanton Police Department at all about them. I, I was concerned that State Farm would do what they were supposed to do. And so it shocked me that this was being talked about throughout the throughout the city. But I guess this is what got back to the the, the, the boss at, at McNeil Chevrolet. So I was basically told if I said anything about the police, we are no longer going to be able to talk or anything. So let me know then that we're not friends. I was your damn cash cow when I worked at McNeil's, and you showed your true colors when we were at our lowest point in life, and not one of you bastards reached out to me. All you did was sit back and watched, and then instead of helping or assisting, you called me on my phone 
impersonating the same police department that pulled this racist bullshit in the first place. Why did I say it's racist? Because if Tano's Pizza, which was next door to us, if their alarm went off, it wouldn't have took the police an hour to get there. If McNeil's alarm goes off, I've worked there for seven years as the finance manager. Sometimes, sometimes I get there, the cops sitting in the, in the parking lot. If their alarm would have went off, it wouldn't have took no damn hour for the police to arrive. Somehow, my business was closer to the police than all of them. I'm at home snuggled up in the bed with my wife. You're notified that there's a disturbance at my business, yet you go to the wrong address when everybody in town knows where this business is. This business lit up the whole downtown street. Cops drove up and down the street all day long every day. So you're going to sit back and tell me that I deserve to be investigated and you blame me for the crime? State Farm, oh no, this is not over. You will pay for this. McNeil's, you harassed, you will pay for this. Anybody that was unethically treated, I want to, I want to, I want your information because I'm literally orchestrating a deal, a dealership audit on African American deals. I'm going to make noise until my voice is heard. This community did not treat our my business or my family well. I gave all I had to you all for seven plus years as the finance manager. And then I came back and brought you a business that brought us over $145,000 in sales in eight months and over a hundred five star plus ratings on Google in, in the same eight months of people right there in your community. And 74% of our customers were over the age of 55. So you tell me, we were not just the place where you went to go get some THC. We were the place that offered alternative medicine to place it people that needed it. Arthritis, cancer. The damn physical therapist that was in town referred their customers to our store. It's on Google. I do all of this and you come back, deny my claim, and then allow us to get robbed again. Everything they didn't get the first time, they took it the, the second time and the doors were changed on the slots. All of this while we have a recorded land contract. Where does that happen at? All under Swanton Police's eye and watch. The mayor's watch. What was delivered to my house was garbage. They stole TVs. They stole furniture. They stole equipment. They stole our camera systems. They stole all whatever that did not get taken the first time because clearly we got pictures of what it looked like after the fact. Nothing was done. And State Farm thinks they don't have to pay for anything after they turned my life upside down. My entire family has been affected. My entire life has changed. And you were supposed to be my insurance company. And you weaseled out of paying for this. And then McNeil's, you brought your own dumbass in the situation. You could have been nice and as a friend to me. I'm thinking you giving me a job offer, something like you calling me to play on my damn phone like I'm 14 years old, acting like these damn cops. I thought that was a damn crime. If I called somebody impersonating the police, I'm a damn public notary agent. I know damn well that's a crime. But you can get away with it and nothing be done. Damn, I ain't just no former employee. GM, General Motors, I'm also a former customer of yours. Do something about this. Somebody better speak up before my legal team gets started next week. You don't want to talk to me, then you're going to talk to them. And this could be worked out. But at this point, y'all want to ignore me? Fine. I'm going to speak every day. I want to sit down in my office. McNeil's knows I dressed this way when I came to work. Nobody stood up for my defense. What the hell? Damn it. I thought, fuck, I, did you want to say we friends? You don't give a damn about me or my family.
And so since you don't give a damn, the gloves coming off. I want the reality of what happened at that dealership exposed. You don't believe me? Ask them how many employees they had that looked like me for the last 10 years. And don't, oh, don't let them run up and go hire a bunch of them real fast. Go out there now and just pull the last 10 years. You think I'm playing games? Go ask to pull the last 10 years of all African-American car deals. And let's look at the difference in what was charged on the car. What was charged on the interest rate. Because see, most of them deals, I couldn't do nothing on them because the bank said, no, their credit's bad. You can only sell them a warranty at this amount. You can only put gap on it at this amount. We're going to give you interest rate at this, and that's it. But what about the front end of the car before it even came to finance? What about that? What about the front end? Which was always told we can't adjust that to help it on the back. So no, that you can't touch the front. No, the front is where they made money at. Let me explain something to you, what the front end is. Front end is all in. You go to an auction, you buy a car for six or $600, you put some cost in it. Let's say it brings up all out, all in, it costs you $1,100 for that car to fix it up, repair it, and put it on the lot. All in is, that's your cost. What they want to do is maximize how much they can get on the front of that. So if your cost is $1,100, but you convince the customer that this $1,100 car is worth $2,000, you've already made money for the dealership and the salesman already to the max. And the payment is raised before it even makes it to finance. So the finance manager is saying to the customer, you got to buy a warranty or gap or warranty and gap. You can't buy nothing else extra. And we're either capped at raising your rate two points, max, point and a half. But a lot of times when the banks cap those loans, they would say, no, you're capped at this rate. If we're going to give you this loan, which means this current person has a terrible credit score, doesn't have much down, we're going to give you a chance, but we're going to say, no, this is it. At this rate, we'll pay you a flat, a uh, 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 flat rate as a per, as the finance manager. You only make two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars on the warranty, and you got to buy our gap insurance. That's the standard capped deal for the person with bad credit that came out to McNeil's that looked like me. But what I just told you that experience that happened before finance, it can be proven in one second by somebody pulling out some deals. The gloves are coming off. Y'all played with me and my family long enough. And you don't get to do that. I got kids, I got grandkids, all of that. Somebody did this. Somebody's responsible. And you don't get to put that off on me and don't even have no evidence of what you say. So State Farm, you are indicted. McNeil's, I'm indicting you. LaRich, I hate it, but you got to be indicted too because you're involved. You own the damn dealership portionly, unless you sold it all to me, Jason, which I don't believe you did. So we're going to have to put you in there. Swanton Mayor Neil Tope, you know you're going to be talked about. Swanton Police Department, you're going to be discussed because all of y'all wronged me. Every one of y'all. Every single one of y'all that I just mentioned. And you stole my business from me. And you got away with it. With nothing happening. It's not over. That's it. That's all I wanted today.